Shalom, my friends. Okay, today I'm going to address both the flat earth and the round earth uh, group as a whole. Okay, we all have our differences. Uh, some believe that the earth is still round, some believe the earth is flat, some are in the middle. However, uh, I think, I believe that we need to get to a point where we establish some kind of guideline here because quite frankly I'm a little frustrated with everyone quoting all this garbage and half of what you're quoting is not backed by any science. Flat earthers, in all fairness, both sides do it. Um, in my opinion, round earthers do it more than flat earthers, but here's the problem. We have been taught things that are not backed by scientific method. And if you've listened to me at any extent, you know that I've become quite the proponent of scientific method. So, for example, I have we have people that present pictures of things like planets and things that can be taken into Photoshop, torn apart, and be proven by scientific analysis that these pictures are not uh, solid evidence and proof. And then people want to make excuses. They're CG, you know, the, a CGI picture folks is, po folks is not proof, okay? I'm not going to go into that right now because that's not the point. My point is that if you want to present proof, for example, photographic proof cannot be altered. It cannot be manipulated, okay? In order for it to be considered actual, real scientific evidence. CGI does not count as evidence because it's crea created in a computer, okay? It's generated in a computer and there's no actual... Uh, object being photographed okay so that's just an example all right but today I want us to all come together and agree that we're going to agree and we're gonna go back a couple hundred years to agree on the scientific method that we're gonna use scientific method part of the reason that these pseudoscientists and and people are able to get up and just spout opinion folks for me flat earth is not an opinion I have seen enough what I would, under scientific analysis, call proof that I have, I have turned away from the round earth and I've become a flat earther. I, I believe in the flat earth. And I believe that you can present enough proof to do that. Um, and so we need to be able to establish some groundwork or some ground basis of understanding for this uh, discussion, this analysis, this argument to go forward. Okay. It seems funny because some people are, are, are already realizing this, but we need to go back to the original scientific method. Okay. And we need to agree, both camps need to agree that we're going to use scientific method to prove one way or the other, if it's possible to prove one way or the other. Now, uh, just for those of you that don't know me, my name is Joshua Michael. I run the, the channel GM Truth TV. Okay, and I do a lot of different videos over a lot of different topics. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in film and graphic design and a graduate level degree in instructional design and technology. I am huge into the research and looking into um, proofs for things and making sure that we've established a scientific uh, basis uh, of both study and uh, analysis to be able to present our uh, findings or our proofs. Okay, so I'm going to lay out the scientific method and I would like to impress all of us, round earthers, flat earthers, all of us to agree that if we're going to present evidence, that evidence needs to have followed a certain, um, a certain process. And there is a process that's been already established by science for hundreds, hundreds of years. Okay, that is the scientific method. Okay, the first part of the scientific method is the question or problem. Okay, this question or problem uh, is the basis by which the scientific method is handled from beginning to end uh, in the hopes that, we'll, that the problem will, by the end of it, have a solution. Okay, now the scientific method, uh, the next part of that scientific method is to do a background research if necessary. So, um, for example, I'm uh, just throwing this out here. Uh, this is just to give an example of the background research you might do uh, 
uh, for the problem. So let's say the question or problem is, is the earth flat? Okay. So the background research is, have ancient civilizations also, uh, do they have any historical records to support a flat earth or round earth hypothesis? Okay. As it turns out, most of your ancient societies actually did have uh, the belief the, that the earth was flat. We know that from history. Um, history made fun of the, the people that uh, were unintelligent and didn't believe in the flat earth and, or believed in the flat earth way back then because they weren't quite as uh, sophisticated as we are, supposedly, uh, even though they built things back then that we can't build today. But forget that. Anyway, so there is some research to support that. Is there any is there any research to support around Earth um, before Galileo? I don't believe there was actually any. And I know I've heard people say, "Oh yeah, for thousands of years they believed the Earth was round." That is not true. There's no historical basis for that statement. None. Okay. Um, if anybody can find some, please feel free to come and show me. Because, um, but if you're going to bring it, then give me the reference and cite your source. Okay. That's another issue that I have personally is people need to cite their source when they when they present something. Okay, to say Galileo said X Y Z, I need to cite a source that can reference that, and then also that has proof or evidence that that statement was in fact actually said by Galileo or whoever it is, whoever the case is. Okay, the next um, the next issue in this uh, scientific method is to formulate a hypothesis. So. To do that is real simple. You would simply say, okay, if I do A and B, C is my result. Or if I do A and B, D is my result. Okay? I think I think from A and B, D will happen. Okay? And and then from that, you're gonna develop some testable uh, predictions. So or um, what what are, what are the possible outcomes? You're gonna try to guess what the possible outcomes might be. Okay, because from there, then you're going to go back and you're going to build a, an experiment that supports that, um, that hypothesis. Okay, now, there are some other issues you may run into in the process. One is you need to establish by a controlled environment that you got from A and B to do C. Okay, it needs to be a controlled environment. Why? Because that way it can be repeatable and replicate, replicatable. Okay, so somebody in London can go to the same experiment or same example or same test and they will they can wind up with the same results. Okay. Then you're gonna run your experiment and uh, and you're going to come up with some results and you're gonna find out is the procedure right or wrong. Okay. If at this point you do not wind up with the results you expected or you had some kind of alteration in your experiment, you may need to go back and revisit either your hypothesis or, or, or your experiments itself, okay? And you want to go back and retest it multiple times, not just once. I'm going to give an example here uh, of this. Jaronism did a uh, video test where he used a laser to test the light and shadow during the day and then the light and shadow during the night. Now, one of the things that I noticed, and I haven't done this experiment yet, I'm just hypothesizing on his experiment and why I think he came up with um, different results than he expected. May have been because he did it on a day that there, the moon was out, but it was in what we call a new moon phase. Okay, so there was it was it was solid, it was solid black. Okay, but see, my hypothesis is: does the does the moon still generate energy? even in a new moon phase. And the only way to test that would be like if Jaron had, uh, the, if the moon was out and in the new moon phase and you ran the test and, you know, I would assume that be the case. The only way to test opposite that uh, would be to do it in a time when the moon is not in the sky. Now, there are several variables with that. The problem is that how far does the moon's energy carry? We know really very little about the sun and moon. So there might be some, a little bit of, of, of give or take in that uh, scenario. It'd be interesting to do it during a moon, new moon phase and then when the moon's not actually in the sky, uh, anywhere in the area, 
um, and then to do your test results and see if the test results are the same or different. Um, so that's just an example of that. Um, okay, if your experiment went as you planned it, or partially as you planned it, then you need to analyze the data and draw a conclusion or figure out if you need to go back and retest or maybe change some of the variables or whatever. But any change you make to the process needs to be well documented because you wanna make sure that it doesn't change your hypothesis. Okay, because if it's going to affect the hypothesis, then you need to, to, to scrap it and start from, from the beginning again. So again, what, once you have analyzed the data, you may need to advance to the next stage or restart your entire project or entire problem all over again, okay? Thomas Edison, when he was putting together the light bulb, apparently did like a thousand different experiments or whatever the number was, and he was asked, you know, why did you, why were you willing to fail a hundred thousand times or a thousand times, whatever the number was? And he said, I didn't fail a thousand times, I just found a thousand ways it wouldn't work. Um, that's a true person that's willing to go as far as it needs to go to get to the end, okay? Um, and then, also, once you've collab, once you've brought all this data together, you've got the results you needed, you've, you've uh, recorded it as well as you can, then those results need to be communicated uh, accurately to your audience. So, uh, I believe that A and B uh, would cause C. Okay, I, I hypothesized that A and B would cause C. I developed, these are the tests that I developed, and this is the experiment that we ran, and here's the, the data for the people to analyze to say this is, this is the result of that, and here's my conclusion. Now, there may be people that will come back at your conclusion and make an argument. Now, the, the, what, what, or a lot of times over history, I think things went wrong is, People made arguments without actually going back and, 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 and repeating the process or repeating that actual scientific method process. We have um, what appears to be people who are, who are making assumptions about things without doing the proper scientific analytical work to, to, to draw their own conclusion or to come to their own conclusions or to present the proper conclusion for people now. There have been people in the past, like Joe Rogan, who have said, oh, you don't wear a white coat, sir, and you're not a scientist. Folks, if you look back through the anvils of time, you will find that most scientists didn't wear white coats because they didn't exist back then, okay? They simply went out and performed experiments. If you take a beaker, you pour water into it, you boil it for an experiment, you are doing a scientific experiment, okay? There is nowhere in history that says you have to have a doctorate's degree in astrophysics like Neil deGrasse Tyson or an honorary degree like uh, Bill Nye the science guy who, by the way, isn't even a science guy. That you cannot be a scientist in your own kitchen, your own backyard, wherever, and run a scientific experiment. Benjamin Franklin used to run them out of his home all the time, okay? So, Joe Rogan, you were an absolute, well, okay, I don't want to insult you, but absolutely ridiculous comments you made or you don't wear lab coats you're not a scientist you okay that, that guys we need to be smarter than that i don't know who joe rogan thinks he is or or what he thinks he's doing but this is the guy that had truth and went backwards anyway um for whatever reason you know this is the scientific method that we need to be using in order to prove our proofs this is why i love for example Rob Skiba, when he goes into the computer and he breaks down a photo for you, uh, like the one that I've done on the Hubble and, and other people have done, breaking it down for you in real time. Because this is an experiment you can go onto the NASA website, you can look at these photos, you can download them and go through them just like we did and come up with the same result. Now, that is a type of scientific analytical process, okay, that happened. The problem is that most people most people don't understand scientific method and they don't understand that debunking, for example, a photo is part of a scientific process, part of proving that something is not real, okay? And, and the equipment that we use vary depending on the type of um, subject matter we're working with. Film, <coughs> excuse me, film and photography, you're gonna work with a computer-based program most of the time in order to uh, alleviate 
anyone's uh, issue that a photo photograph is real or not real. Photoshop is what most forensic people use in order to examine a photo because there's so many tools at our disposal to be able to tweak that photo in order to find anomalies that may not be seen with the naked eye behind the image. Okay, that's just an example. However, again, I'm going to propose to the entire Flat Earth and Rounders community that we please go back and use the scientific method. Okay, um, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't even probably really know the scientific method, which is why I'm doing this video. All right, but the bottom line is, if you're going to present proof, proof needs to be backed up by by experiment and analytical process. Okay, please, 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 especially to my flat earther, flat earther friends, always, always, always stick to the scientific method because the other side doesn't, and they they really can't prove things. All they have, you know, the other day I watched Bill Nye on Fox News talk about, well, global warming is, you know, it's proven science. Really? Where's the proof? Where's the scientific proof? Bill Nye sitting in a news station with his mouth saying, oh, there's scientific proof is not proof. Where is the hard data, so to speak? Where is the hard proof? the actual scientific data that we can go to and we can look at and we can test it and examine it and make sure that, that it wasn't twisted in some way. The reason you won't find that proof is because the minute you give it to somebody else, they can go to work in, in trying to debunk it or trying to prove that, 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 it, was, that it was done incorrectly at some, at some way. And they won't do that, folks. Most people won't do that, all right? Especially those that are pushing the agenda. Okay, so the bottom line is, I am asking the entire community, if we can please, please, please stick to the scientific method, okay? All these discussions are very cool. All these, all these debates and, and, and opinion talks and, and interviews, and they're very, very cool. But when it comes to prevent, presenting evidence and, and, and scientific proof, please make sure it fits the scientific method. Please make sure you have logged it enough or, or through video or whatever, that you can, someone else can replicate your experiment, that they might be able to come up with the same results or different results based on doing the same things that you did. Okay. Thank you so much. Some great examples out there, by the way, of that is Jaronism, ODD TV. Um, and I know that uh, 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 Dell does a lot of that stuff and obviously your 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 friend and mine Rob Skiba who's done a phen phenomenal job showing uh, atmospheric lensing and the rising and setting of the Sun and and the whole photography thing uh, Rob my hats off to you great job but I would ask the entire community if we would please 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 stick to the scientific method because most people on the other side don't and they don't have a leg to stand on okay and we want people to see that we're doing things the right way that having been said i hope it's been a blessing to you until next time my friends shalom